Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jack and you're from Nothing Tech. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today's video is a special one. When Microsoft contacted me asking me if I'd be interested in reviewing the Surface laptop, of course I was game, but I wanted to bring a unique perspective to this situation. And that perspective is the student perspective. School is right around the corner. I know, I know. It's the inevitable though. So a lot of students are in the market for a laptop that they can reuse for the next couple of years. For that reason, I think it's a perfect time that Microsoft came out with this laptop because a lot of students are in the market for it and I think that this one is an incredible option. So in this video, I wanna give you guys a review of the laptop, tell you guys the pros, the cons, what I've liked about it, using it, what I've hated about, basically uh, a review. So let's get into it. I think that if you're a student in the market for a laptop, you're looking for nine main things. Portability, a stylish build, a good keyboard and trackpad, a great screen, solid speakers for media consumption, good battery life that will last a day of taking notes and uh, watching Netflix and stuff like that, a good software experience to get your work done and consume media. And lastly, good performance with specs that won't be outdated in a few years. I think that this computer gets most of that right. I want to start out with the design of this computer as that's definitely one of my favorite things about it. When I met up with Microsoft to get this computer, they emphasized how much time went into getting this design perfect. From finding the right texture of the aluminum to the perfect material for the inside, they wanted everything to look and feel great. And they've really succeeded. From the feeling of the aluminum on the outside to the seamless underneath with zero screws present, the Surface laptop looks great. I'm in love with this cobalt blue color and the etched out Surface logo on the top looks very classy. All the colors are great though. They all pop while still being understated at the same time, if that makes sense. And I feel like this computer could have a really big audience. You could see it in a first class seat on an airplane or in a dorm room. I feel like this appeals to many, many different people. When you pop open the perfectly weighted hinge with one hand, yes, you'll be greeted with something extremely unique to Microsoft, an Alcateria interior. Yeah, you heard that right. The stuff that's used on luxury cars, it's no joke. I'm a little bit worried about how it's gonna wear over time though, as I know college kids are gonna be writing papers late night while eating food, but I think if you're careful and you wash it often, you'll be fine. Yeah, so you heard that right. Uh, you can wash the Microsoft Surface laptop because it's water resistant, which is a huge win. And it's really great because spills do happen, especially if you're not the most careful or you have irresponsible friends. Finishing off the aesthetics of this computer, I do wanna mention one last time the attention to detail. The fact that the keyboard and trackpad are color matched to the outside just to complement it so well is very, very cool. And I think it's something that is so subtle, but it just adds to the experience of buying a premium laptop that you just get those little things right. The next pillar of a great laptop has got to be portability. And portability is a huge one. This laptop is gonna be in your bag every single day, so every ounce really matters. Coming in at 2.76 pounds, this computer is lighter than air. And it's also 14.47 millimeters at the back of the device and 9.93 millimeters at the front of the device, meaning it's extremely thin. So when I say it's lighter than air, I of course mean the MacBook Air and uh, not actual air, sorry Steve. Uh, but the MacBook Air is a device used by tons and tons of college students, so uh, the fact that this is lighter is a huge win, and a lot of college students use the MacBook Air, but I think that there are a lot of flaws with the MacBook Air, and it's so outdated now, starting with the huge bezel surrounding the screen, and then the actual screen, it's so low resolution, and then the specs just backing the whole computer. Everything is so outdated because Apple hasn't really updated that line in a few years. So I think that this computer is a really great competitor to the MacBook Air, especially since it's lighter, and it just looks a hell of a lot more stylish. A good keyboard and trackpad is also essential for a device like this as those are two of the main interaction points. Luckily, they are both great. The keys have a really large 1.5 millimeter travel and they're also really quiet. The keys are also very tactile and they're in a very good layout. The arrow keys will take a second to get used to though because they're in a mushed together orientation. Everything else about the keyboard is great though. The backlighting helps tremendously in the dark and I like the fact that it turns off when it's not in use to preserve battery life. The trackpad is another hit out of the park. It is a precision trackpad that is 105 millimeters by 70 millimeters and it's made out of glass. It is easy to scroll on and the touch to click works perfectly. 
It is a typical trackpad in the sense that you will get better clicks towards the bottom due to the diving board mechanism, but the click it produces feels and sounds great. My only feedback to Microsoft would be to make the trackpad a little bit longer, but that's really a gripe as the trackpad is really great and I haven't actually found a need for it to be any larger in typical use. It's only when I'm video editing or something, which isn't what the typical person is going to be doing on this computer anyways. The screen is also phenomenal. I'm running out of adjectives to describe how great this device is. It is a 13.5 inch pixel sense display with 3.4 million pixels, a resolution of 2256 by 1504 and 201 pixels per inch. It also has support for 100% of the sRGB color with each pixel individually calibrated. It has a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, which is great for getting more screen real estate. The aspect ratio is perfect for split screen mode. When you have a document as one of the sides, it will be formatted the way it would actually show up on paper, which is super underrated. I can run a list of specs next to my script to go back to when I need them without compromising how the document looks. And don't worry, your Netflix binge watching won't suffer as the screen looks great for that too. And the downloadable Netflix app lets you download shows and movies for offline use, which is something that the web version actually can't do. So the screen is also touch enabled, which is great, but it does not articulate all the way down to lay flat. So it won't be great for handwritten notes. You can touch on the screen and stuff like that without uh, it moving. But as soon as you start writing on it, the hinge will move a little bit. So if you're looking for something like that, where you can take a lot of handwritten notes and draw and stuff like that, you're probably better off going to the Surface Pro lineup. And I'm very interested in testing out a Surface Pro computer. So if you're interested in seeing a video on that, definitely let me know by commenting down below and leaving a like on this one. I'm always really impressed but kind of skeptical when companies find different places to put technology in a computer of this size. So when I heard that the speakers were underneath the keyboard on this computer, I was a little bit skeptical, I'm not gonna lie. But after hearing them, I was shook. They're pretty insane. On the front, it has an iPhone 8 vector with the new vertical cameras. It has an iPhone on the side. And then on the back, it has uh, some information about the device. And the translation is okay. They're loud, clear, punchy, and any other word to describe a great sounding pair of speakers. Especially for the fact that they're built into this computer in this form factor. It's mind boggling, I'm being serious. Like you have to go into a store to really understand how good it is. But because they're so good, I actually haven't been plugging in my headphones as much. So I'm sorry QC35s, but uh, these computer speakers have actually really impressed me. I would say that they're a little bit better than uh, the 12 inch MacBooks and the 12 inch MacBook speakers are really, really good. Okay, so going on a bit of a side note, I wanna discuss the ports on this computer or the lack thereof. I would argue that the biggest disappointment with this computer is the port situation. The fact that it packs so few ports and then the ports that it does pack are old technology. It has one full-size USB 3.0 port, one mini display port, one headphone jack, and the service connect port for power and docking. On another side note, I love that port. It's so useful if anyone ever walks into your cable, uh, you have a little kid or an irresponsible friend again, they walk into it, you're gonna be fine. Uh, it will just disconnect from the computer and you'll be good to go. The computer's not gonna fall on the floor. A lot of computers are moving towards USB type C, which is great, it's the future. I'll talk more about that in a second. But the cables are detachable, so if you walk into it, you can put your $1,000 investment smashed on the floor into smithereens. So I actually really, really like that port. It's kind of like MagSafe if you're a Mac user. That's what I'd equate it to, but it's really great. It's so underrated. I use it literally all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into the cable and been saved by it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Microsoft Connect port. <laughs> I feel like that's a little bit too far. So going back to the port situation though, it's not just that Microsoft didn't include that many ports, but it's also that the ports that they included are old tech. The tech in me really, really, really wanted a USB type C port and uh, the video editor in me really wanted an SD card slot, but the student in me knows that most students are only gonna be plugging in their charging cable for their phone, um, a flash drive every once in a while and they probably won't even notice how few ports there are. So uh, the student perspective wouldn't really care about it, but the techie perspective, I would have liked to see Microsoft do better and I'm hoping in the next generation that there are more ports and the ports are more recent. Okay, but getting back into the pillars, let's discuss software as that greatly affects battery life. Okay, so the software that this computer runs natively is Windows 10S, 
which is basically a slightly toned down version of Windows 10 in the sense that you can only download applications from the Windows Store and you can't download anything from online. There are so many viruses that plague computers and students often aren't considering if a download will give them a virus, they just click the download without thinking about it. So this will definitely help uh, these computers from getting viruses and it also will help battery life, more on that later. And before I get the comments about Windows 10 as being stupid, just hear me out here and then we'll talk about the disadvantages, but just hear me out about some of the advantages of it and uh, why I think it's actually kind of good for students. So let's start with the thing that probably is most people heated, the fact that you can only download applications from the store. And uh, my Microsoft rep told me that they're looking to constantly add new applications to the store. I mean, they already added Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and a bunch of other things are coming. So I don't doubt that they'll keep adding applications to the store and only downloading applications from the store ensures that you're not gonna get a virus, which is a huge pro because so many laptops are plagued with viruses. If you do decide to stick with Windows 10 S, you will be locked into Edge. And before you say anything, I know, I know, it used to suck, but hear me out, there's actually a few features that I like about it. And even though I immensely prefer Firefox over it, I still really liked a few features about it after using it over these past few weeks. And I kind of hope that those features are brought over to Firefox because they're gonna be a little bit hard to live without. Let's say that you're traveling. So you go into a rabbit hole of finding flights, hotels, uh, restaurant reviews, open table stuff. You just get tons and tons of tabs open. And then you decide that you wanna look up uh, a Canon 70D, but you don't wanna lose all those tabs. Well, Windows Edge has something for you. You just click in the left corner, it will put all the tabs away, save them for later. You can search whatever you want, and then you can come back to them whenever. And that's actually super cool. Uh, I was planning my trip to California. I'll link my vlog down below. I met some really cool people, but I was planning my trip to California uh, and I brought up a bunch of stuff. And then uh, I decided that I wanted to look up uh, a Red Raven, even though only in my dreams. Uh, and I put all the tabs aside and then I was able to come back to them later. And that is really, really cool. I really hope that Firefox and other um, web browsers start to add that in. Another advantage of Windows 10 S is a great battery life that you get with it. Microsoft is claiming up to 14.5 hours of battery life. And while your mileage might vary, the battery life on this machine is really impressive. While watching Netflix, web browsing, switching through multiple tabs and scripting, I got about 12 hours with the computer and the screen on about 70% brightness. That's really impressive. Okay, so I told you the good things about it, but let's face it, you're just not on board with Windows 10 S, you need that Windows 10 life. Well, don't worry. In about 90 seconds, you can upgrade your computer to the full Windows 10 uh, for free until the end of 2017. And then after that, it's only gonna be a $50 upgrade. So I don't know why everyone's freaking out. If you're buying this computer, you're probably buying it now anyway. So it's a fast and easy upgrade, literally 90 seconds. So it's really not a big deal. I think that you should try out Windows 10 S because the battery life is so much better on it. But if you decide to switch to Windows 10, your battery life, whatever you were getting on 10S, will probably go down by about an hour or so, which isn't a huge deal. But I think if you can live on Windows 10S, it's actually a really cool operating system, especially as a student or a teacher. You make sure that your computer doesn't get a virus and you also get that little extra added battery life, which is really cool. The last topic to discuss is the price, the specs, and the performance. The base model is $999, and for that, you get an Intel Core i5, four gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. The most expensive model is $2,199, and for that price, you get an Intel Core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. I think that the mid-tier configuration with the Core i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, and 250 gigabytes of SSD storage has the best performance to price ratio, and that's the model that I have here. It is really fast for web browsing, note-taking, and light like gaming. Most students aren't video editors or frequent Photoshop CC users, so this model should work for those people who are not. If, however, you are a student looking for a computer that can handle your schoolwork, but can also handle video editing and stuff like that, you could be better off with a razor blade Stealth, but you will lose the premium and lightweight design if you do go that route. So before the hundreds and hundreds of comments come in saying that you could build a beast of a PC for a lot less, that's not the point of this computer. This computer is meant to be extremely portable, extremely good looking, and uh, the latest and greatest. That PC that you build at home that might look and feel great, you can't bring that to class. So if you're thinking about this computer in that way, you're thinking about it in the incorrect way. Do you wanna know if it's worth it for you? Let me give you these three questions that will help me decide for you. Number one, are you in the market for a really portable computer? Number two, are looks and a really good build quality important to you? If they are, this computer is a one. 
And of course, number three, are you someone that doesn't require a computer that can handle really heavy tasks like video editing or Photoshop editing? If you answered yes to all these questions, go out and buy this computer already. What are you doing? It will be linked below. But if you're still a little bit confused, just consider this. Do you need a computer that is really, really lightweight or are you not gonna be traveling or going to classes enough that uh, the weight really matters? Because if you're not, then there's a lot of other great options out there. And another question is, do you really care that much about the uh, premium build? Because again, if you don't, there's a lot of other great options out there. For the people that are gonna comment down below that the computer is uh, not expandable and it's way too expensive, uh, I think you're going to be looking at it from the wrong perspective. I think you really have to understand going in that if you're getting this computer, uh, you're not going to be able to do much in terms of upgrading it later on. So that's why you should spec it out right the first time. And you also should understand that there's a premium for every Microsoft computer, just like there is for Apple computers. And that premium gets you the latest and greatest software all the time and a really premium build. So that's it for me in this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up. It really helps the channel more than you think. Be sure to subscribe down below if uh, you like this content and you want to see more because there's a lot more coming. Click the subscribe button right here, watch my other content here, and I'll catch you guys all so much in the next video. This set is still a work in progress. It should be a lot better next time. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye.